Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the word that you're going to give us today, Father God. I pray that every seed that's coming today, Father God, you give it to us. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. How are ya? Um, so yeah, it's awesome to um, get a chance to share the word of God, a privilege. And um, so for today, the message I'll be preaching is, um, the topic will be the cross. And yeah, so... Um, like talking about the cross, when we talk about the cross, we think of um, we think of pain, we think of His grace, we think of life, death, etc. And goes on. But today we're talking about the sacrifice, the endurance, and the resurrection. Uh, so I'll start off with sacrifice. So, um, yeah, as you all know, in the Old Testament, uh, the sacrifice was made because of people's sin, and it was the only way to um, forgive, to um, get in a place of, get right with God is to make a uh, blood, blood sacrifice, and that was with animals. Yeah. And yeah, and nowadays we're sacrificing animals to eat. Um, but yeah. We we'll just start with, the, with um, Hebrews nine one seven, and we we'll just go on from there. And... Then, really, the first covenant had also ordinance of divine service and worldly sanctuary. When it talks about the first covenant, it talks about the law, the Old Testament. For there was a tabernacle made; the first wherein was the candlestick, and the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after that, the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant, or overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod, the budded, and the tables of the covenant, and over the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplished the service of God. But in the second, went in the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself for himself, and for the errors of the people. So uh, look at this, how there was a tabernacle. God told Moses in the Old Testament to build a tabernacle and to set it unto free. And, and there was only specific people that can go in there. It was the high priest and the priest. Um, and that was for the, um, for people to come and worship, uh, to lay down the sacrifices and that. But I just want to give the meaning for the sacrifice. This is the meaning to uh, sacrifice: is to kill an animal or a person and offer them up to a god or gods. To give up something. The other meaning is to give up something that is valuable in order to help another person. So as we read and we see the Old Testament, how people, they, um, they sacrifice, they, they sin, um, they make sacrifices, and still God wasn't happy. In um, Isaiah, we'll get to Isaiah 1. That's Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, the kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have, under, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's creep, but Israel does not know. My people does not consider a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers. 
children that are corruptors, that have forsaken the Lord, that have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, they are gone away backwards. So as he's talking, he's talking about the, the children of Israel. They were disobedient and they just didn't care. And we read from 10 to 17, 11 to 13, sorry. Hebrews 1, oh sorry, Isaiah verse 1, 11 to 13. Sorry about To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifice unto me, says the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of the fed beast, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of the goats. When you come to appear, appear before me, who have required this at your hand to tread on my courts? Bring no more vain oblation. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons of the, and the Sabbath, the calling of assemblies, cannot away with it. It is iniquity, even the solemn meetings. So we look here that um, how the people of Israel they made sacrifices and and then they're still made multitude of sacrifices, but they still, it was, it was in vain because they sacrificed and they still done the same thing. Sacrifice, still done the same thing. Um, go to Hebrews 9, 11, 16. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of heifer sprinkled the unclean, sanctify the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal offered himself without spot to, uh, to God, purge your conscience, conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the media of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgression that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also necessarily be the death of a testator. I think that explains it all. Um, 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter 1, eighteen to 19. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible, corruptible things as silver and gold for your vain conversations received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Amen. Uh, John 1, 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So we see how the Old Testament, how the animals took the sin of the world, uh, the sin of the people. But we see here that that's why Jesus came, because the animals couldn't take it away. But now in the New Testament, that Jesus came and his blood, it's only by his blood that we receive righteousness. Um, Hebrews 9, 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now appear in the presence of God for us. Now ye, that he should offer himself often as the high priest, Enter into the holy place every year with blood or others of others. For well, then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once he end now once in the end of the world had he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time with sin. Unto, without sin, unto salvation. So, um, yeah, one more. Hebrews 10, 1 to 14. Hebrews 10, 
1 to 14. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers in their own to perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers at once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sin every year. For it is not impossible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away the sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin thou hast no pleasure. Then said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offers, offerings for sin, thou was not, neither had pleasure therein, which had offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do the will of God. He take away the first, that he may establish the second. By that which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin, forever sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting to his enemies be made his footstool. By one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. And it's only Christ's blood that can sanctify you. Um, can we turn to Isaiah 53, verse 1? Now we're going to look at the endurance of Christ, what he went through. So Isaiah 53, verse 5 to 10. Amen, have you got it? But he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, he is brought as lambs. To the slaughter, and as the sheep before his uh, his shearer is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison, from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken, and he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. And thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Amen. So this is Isaiah talking about um, Jesus here. Philippians 2, to eight, 2 verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man... He humbled himself and became, became, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Matthew 27, we're going to read for 20 to 31. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain were ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do? Then with Jesus, which is called Christ, they all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, What evil have he done? But they cried out more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and our children. Then released Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, 
he delivered him to be crucified. I was looking at the word scourge, and it doesn't just mean a slap or a thing. It means to be whipped. And back that time, they used to have this, this whip with this nine, it's called a nine-tail nail or something. Cat, yeah. Yeah, and they used to, that was the meaning of scourge. Then the soldiers of the governors took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head's head and a reed his right hand. And they bowed at the knees before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe of him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. Yeah. So that was Jesus um, in the council when they took him into council. And, and there was one guy named Barabbas. They took him instead of Jesus. And even the, um, what's his name? The... Uh, yeah, they, he didn't even find fault in Christ. Um, now we look at Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 12, 2 and 3. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, who for, who for the joy was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Let ye be wearied and faint in your minds. So somehow we see how Jesus endured two things. He endured the cross and then he endured the contradictions of people against him. Um, even in the garden, he could have called 12 um, legions of angels, but he didn't. He looked at the joy that was set before him. Um, uh, Colossians 2.15 and having spoiled principalities oh read 14 sorry blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to the cross his cross and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it so the good thing about the cross is um, he rose again and it disarmed all the powers of the enemy. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 8. Heaps of scriptures. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received. And wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he arose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the Greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then all of the apostles, and last all he was seen of me also, of one born out of due time. So, yeah, the scripture is talking about how there was witnesses that saw Christ after his death, after his resurrection. So, yeah. Uh, last scripture, is that all right? Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus is the final authority. No matter what anyone says, no matter what other what, what, what books, but Jesus has the final say. He's the final authority.
the gospel. And for me, I believe for me, I believe this is the this is the heart of worship. The the death, the resurrection, and the the um, the endurance through the cross. I believe for us is as Christians, the foundation is the gospel and what he done on that cross. And um, through the offering himself, and it's all the characteristics of God, through his grace, he offered his son, through the shedding of his blood, long-suffering towards us, and the power he's given us to tread on serpents and the enemy. And that's the uh, character of God, and he's given it to us. Um, yeah. So we're going to have communion. And before we have communion, I just want to just read a scripture and just give a, a little bit of an understanding of what communion is. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 30. One Corinthians eleven twenty three to thirty. Everyone got it? Amen. For I have received of the Lord that which also delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, "Take eat. This is my body." which is broken for you. Do this, do, do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye did drink it in remembrance of me. So Jesus saying, like, this cup, the, cup, uh, the, the, the bread and the cup is for remembrance of him. This cup and this bread does not save you. It's your faith in the, in the blood. It's the faith in the cup and the, the blood of Jesus Christ. This just draws you closer to God. It says here that do it in remembrance of him. What he went through on the cross, what he endured, what the sacrifice and the, and the resurrection. That's why he's telling us to do it here, to remember what he done. Um, yeah. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Before... Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the land of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the land. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth the drink damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. He doesn't discern when he drinks that. He doesn't know what this is for, doesn't understand. For this cause many are, um, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning yet the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So, yeah, how it says, many are weak and sickly among you, and many are sleep. Because why? Because they don't remember what the finished works is. It talks about in Revelation, remember when thou hast fallen. Repent and do the first works. So it's so important to remember and what Christ has done for us, the foundation message of Christian life, of the Christian walk. And that's the cross. Our identity comes from that, through Jesus Christ. We're going to do communion now, and when you come up and get it, just take it and just have your time with the Lord.